Welcome to this QuickBooks Online Tutorial for Beginners 2019. My name is Matt Holtquist with the QuickBooks University. And in this video, I want to go through uh, how to fix errors in receiving customer payments. Uh, I see this a lot. I get a lot of questions about this. And uh, first of all, let me let me set the stage and show you what I mean by errors in customer payments, okay? So normally, as you go along in QuickBooks Online and you have a customer that you create an invoice for, let me go over here. We've got, let's say, this invoice for Mark Cho, okay? So this invoice was done and it's out there. And once you create this invoice in QuickBooks, uh, it puts it to sale. So you have revenue in QuickBooks Online, all right? And the normal way to record a payment is you go over here, you say receive payment, and you type in, you know, the amount, 314.28, put it in the bank, it's done. The invoice is closed, you know, revenue has just been recorded once, etc. Okay, so here's what happens. And I know this sounds really strange, but let me, let me show you here. If we go to banking over here, and it just, these are just errors that happen. Sometimes people don't know how to use QuickBooks Online. Sometimes you come in and you have to fix what somebody else did. It, it just happens and you got to go back and fix it. Okay. All right. So let's see, we're in banking and uh, credit cards. Let's go over here. And what I want to do is I want to make a deposit. So where am I at here? Let's see. Uh, bank deposit, other. All right, so we get a check, and let's say it's from Mark Cho. All right, so we go over here, and we've got these undeposited funds, so let's ignore those for now. But let's say we get a check in the mail for Mark Cho. He's paying his invoice, okay? So we go in here, and we say, bank deposit, Mark Cho, um, you know, account. We're going to just, we don't know. We're going to put this to design income, because that sounds good. Let's say it was a check and it's 314.28. Okay. So that really is for that invoice, but what we're doing here is we're putting it to design income. So what happens right here when I make this deposit is I am now doubling my revenue. Okay. Because revenue was increased once with the invoice. And then when I show this deposit, I'm doing it again. So I've double counted this 314.28. And this happens a lot. All right. Okay, so let's hit save and close. All right, so now if we go back over to sales and I show you uh, the invoices. All right, we're gonna see, well, let me go back to all sales. All right, we still have our Mark Cho invoice, okay? And it's still showing as outstanding, nothing happened. Okay, so the question is, how do you fix this? And I'm gonna tell you after I show you how to fix it, uh, the, the typical situation you could find yourself in. Okay. All right. So what we want to do is we want to go back to, if you go to your, uh, chart of accounts over here and we go to the checking and let me view this register. All right. Let me close this. Okay. So Mark Cho, here's this payment right here. Okay. So one simple way to do this is if you go into this payment, okay you can change this from design income to accounts receivable. Okay. If I hit save, all right, transaction save. So this now went to accounts receivable. So what this does is it's going to create a credit on Mark Cho's account. Okay. So if I go to sales, okay, you're going to see deposit here for 314.28. Okay, so what you can do then is go to this invoice and say receive payment. Voila, it shows up as a credit on his account. Okay, so now you're receiving a payment against that invoice. All right, so we can just hit save and close. There's no dollar amount up here because we're not making a physical deposit. We're just applying this as a credit against his invoice. Okay, hit save and close. And there you go paid and closed. It's done. Okay. So that's a simple way. What you're doing then is you're, you're getting revenue back to where it should have been. And you're offsetting that invoice against, uh, the payment that was received. And that's an easy way that you're going to go back and fix that. 
Okay, now there's a couple other ways you could do it, but this in general is going to be a simple way to do it. All right, so a couple steps there. Now, the, the situation most people find themselves in is they might say, you know, especially when they, they take the QuickBooks University training, they say, look, I mean, I've just recorded deposits all year and I've got these invoices. How do I fix this? Well, um, it, it, one, it depends on the situation. And of course, when they become a member, I walk them through how to fix it specifically for their situation. But let's say that you didn't do invoices and you just made deposits all year long. And you say, now I want to go back and record invoices and apply those payments. Well, it may not make sense to do that if, if you're going back a full year. Okay, just let the deposits be the deposits and then maybe start fresh January 1st, 2019 or what, whatever your cutoff is, you know, a yearly cutoff uh, or, um, you know, if it just goes back a month, you know, then, okay, well, maybe go ahead and fix that. Now, if you're coming into a situation where somebody else was doing the books and now you're having to do the books, uh, you know, going back and, and recording all this could be a monumental task. Now, what I will say is that if invoices have been created and there's a bunch of unpaid invoices to customers out there and deposits have been made, uh, you are going to have to go back and apply those deposits, those payments against those invoices, because uh, what will happen is you're going to have doubled revenue for whatever time period that is. Okay. So it could be a lot to fix, most definitely, but uh, you just got to figure out what situation you're in and what the best way to fix it is. All right. Any questions, any comments, feel free to leave them below. Uh, also, head over to the QuickBooks University. Love to teach you QuickBooks uh, online. And uh, we also have QuickBooks Desktop. And then for our members, I also answer their personal questions. Look forward to seeing you over there, qbuniversity.org.